So we're at the vet right now waiting to be seen. We were supposed to be here at 10.30, which is the earliest they could get us in. And apparently there was a vet emergency. Now it will be 12.30 before he can be seen. And it takes me an hour to get here. So the things that you deal with, it seems to be always something. Nothing ever goes smoothly with this stuff. Oh well, anyway, I think we're gonna put him in stall and maybe I'll go see my daughter. Good boy. We'll be back for you in a little bit. So our appointment was at 10:30. It is now almost 3:30, and they told us one more hour, one more hour, two more hours, and quite literally, we have been waiting around all day. I'm trying not to be frustrated. It's not working. So. Supposedly the vet is 10 minutes away. Had they told me it would be this time, I would have been able to go home. But again, it takes me an hour to get here and an hour to get back. So there was no point in going home when they're telling me in one and two hour increments. So hopefully this will be done soon. You brought, stop. All that time for this piece of paper that took five minutes to get. And he wants to eat, so we're done. All right, guys, this is the day that we ship off the little buckling. So about to put them in the crate and take him into the city, put him on an airplane and wave goodbye to him. So he's heading to Florida today to his new home. Oh, he looks excited to go. So this is our goodbye. I'm going to Florida. All right. He's gonna be a beach bum. He'll be a beach bum. Come on, Mister. It's all right, dude. It's just a little, just a little turbulence. Calm down, dude. We're gonna be in the. Panhandle of Florida for spring break. All right, buddy. Bye. Well, we were here three hours in advance. We get here and Delta decides that we need a different form of paperwork, a certificate of acclimation because Florida is cold right now. Well, the certificate was faxed two minutes too late. Even though it's two hours before the flight goes off, we have to take him home and book another flight. Slip. Stop. So, when I catch him, you're going to open this up, slip it over his head, and then we're just going to hook him on the loop on the T on the T post. Okay. All right. You ready? Yep. Yeah, not yet. Right here. Yeah. 
watch out. Belt. All right, Merrill. Let's go, buddy. Open that gate. Shouldn't be hard, huh? I don't know. It's all tied. Hi, Lucky. Ooh, he almost bit my toe off. Huh? He almost bit my toe off. What's on his neck? <laughs> Look at fancy piece there. Fancy piece. <laughs> what is he doing? He's acting like lucky. <laughs> yeah, he's learned a thing from watching luck. What's up, big man? Come on, big guy. Okay, Darren, you want to move this? Open that gate. I'd take that thing. It actually would be greatly helpful. Let's not let all the does out. Darren, tap him on the butt with that thing. There you go. Good luck, little man.
So moving them all at once gives Everest the best chance of not getting beat up too much today. They're all excited to see each other again and Everest has decided to uh, be eaten. So, so far so good. So we still have to clean these pins, but all the does are back together. And they're all running in all three. So as far as the airport and the shipping off the goat, like we were hoping to, it's going to have to wait for tomorrow because they wanted extra documentation that I've never heard of before. All of the goats that we've shipped before were using a different airline because the one we used to use no longer ships goats ever since that whole um, dog dying on the plane ordeal. Anyway, it, uh, it, was, it was a nightmare. But these are the types of things that happen when you are flying goats. So always be prepared for it and it is what it is. So anyway, we got another, we have everything we need now, I think, <laughs> until tomorrow. Hopefully they won't say anything different, but you know, thank goodness the buyer's very patient with me. Not me, just just all things happening and, and the things that happen when you try to put a goat on a plane. It's not always the easiest thing to do, but oh well. I will say that the only thing I've ever liked about the airport is when my daughter Kaylee was 10 years old, she was able to fly a plane. And that was a pretty cool experience, so. literally the only thing I like about airports. All right, so beyond that, we did a little bit of moving around today, guys. We got the does all together. Um, they are all back mingling with each other. All the girls reuniting. Those are happy headbutts. So, I'm glad to have my does back together. Um, they seem happy about it too. Trying to reunite, if you will, making sure they, they find out who's boss again, so <laughs> being silly. We were able to get a couple pens clean today, and uh, hopefully next week we'll be able to get the other couple of pens clean, but starting to get back to normal, so that's good. Are you happy, Sky? Lily. Silly. Silly, Lily. Are you glad to be with just girls? I'm glad to have my girls back. And clean your house next weekend. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Are those old ladies being mean? Let's see. How about you baby girls? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, sweeties. Oh, I'm glad those boys are away from you. So now I can start hanging out with my girls again because it's been a good two months, huh? Now I can start going back in the pen and hanging out with them. They do smell a little bit like buck pee. So if it warms up at all, might have to be giving him a little bit of a bath. Cause you girls stink. Not as bad as the boys, but they like to rub their peed face on them so they smell good like them. What? 
Dingo. Dingo. Oh. Pfft. That was really gross. Hey, girls. How's it going, little bat? What you doing, Kaylee? Hi Say hi. Oh, her makeup might not be did right now, I guess. The boys are loud. They're mad that we took their ladies. And they're also showing each other who's in charge again. But as far as Everest is concerned, they haven't walloped them much at all, so. That's him screaming. Poor baby, he's so cute. Hold on. Everest! So, Lucky, of course, I think has claimed Everest. Well, yeah, they're just fine in their pecking order again. Lucky, of course, is in charge. Announce the new little young and to know so. He might want him to quit screaming, too, because that would be cool. Buddy! Everest! You be nice, Lucky. Jeez. He's in charge. Just stay away. You'll be fine. You'll be fine, mister. Yeah, all things considered. Lucky's such a brat. Ugh. He's going to tear the fence down. I can't stay down here much longer. But all things considered, with the bucks, it's going pretty good. Everest hasn't got beat up or anything. You know, they're, of course, letting him know that he's the young one. And Lucky's being, or I mean, Everest is being pretty smart. He doesn't want to fight him. So as long as he doesn't try starting to fight them, which he shouldn't. Everything's calmed down as far as any heat smells. So... You know, everybody's pregnant. There's no scent of heat going off or anything like that that would trigger him wanting to fight. So, should be okay. As long as he just stays away and keeps his distance and doesn't want to get aggressive with the bigger boys. Which, again, he doesn't. So, it's going pretty good. It's going a lot better than I thought it would. So, good deal. Lucky. You're just a bully. Lucky. Lucky. You spit on my phone, aren't you? Oh, yeah. You're in charge. <laughs> nice tongue. It's a really nice tongue you have. All right, I'll leave you alone. Check it out. The boy is playing with making adobe bricks. So, he's got two wet ones in here. And he's made these ones. They're cracking, but he's playing. These ones look pretty good compared to the first ones. Pretty cool. So the update with Strider here is he really hasn't made many improvements as far as wanting to stay in the yard. We have been walking him, we've been, you know, taking him around the yard, getting him more familiar with, obviously this is his property. We're sitting on 10 acres, uh, 10 and a half acres, and it's still not enough room for him to roam, I guess you can say. What? He wants out. He goes straight for the fences. We got four foot fence and four foot six. There's a barbed wire across the top around the ten and a half acres. No, we don't have money to wall it in or to get eight foot fencing or anything like that. Um, but he just wants out. 
So it's like no matter what we do, every time we let him off, he kind of just darts for the gate. Um, he's also taken a liking to, you know, he gets really excited. Like he might want to fight the neighbor dogs along the fence, which that would be really bad if, if he jumped the fence because he can just jump it. He clears it like it's nothing. Um, so if he did do that and hurt the neighbor dogs, obviously that's not good. So, I don't know, at this point, I mean, he is just the coolest dog. We quite literally, I, I don't know, I, I just think he's the coolest dog ever. I love him. Everything we've read about him, everything we've heard about him, they are like a majestic beast. But I don't think we're ever going to be able to keep him in. So we've given him two weeks, just a little over two weeks. Um, he's more comfortable with us, but I think he's getting restless. He's just, you know, he doesn't have free range, if you will. And we can't give him free range because he wants to get out of the yard as soon as we do. And I think he misses his mama. So, I don't know. The only reason we got him was knowing that we would be able to use it as a trial. If we need to take him back, we could. So, I <laughs> I want to be selfish and keep him as my own, of course, but because I don't want to lose him. I think he's awesome. I love him. But I also don't want that to be on us if, if he runs off or gets lost. Yes, we can... We could tag him, we could get a, a caller, you know, that we could find him, but what, when does that end, you know, we're just going to look for him every night, or? Another thing, uh, he's been taking a lot of time, a lot of babysitting. We are very, stretched very thin on the amount of time we have, and, and I knew he would take time, that, that wasn't, that wasn't anything, we knew we're more than happy to, to dedicate the time to him, but without seeing any improvements really, as far as that he's gonna stay in the yard and not run off, how much time do we give to it? Just, you know, are we gonna dedicate two, three, four more months? Like, we literally, I, I, went, I went to Thanksgiving with the family and Derek had to stay home because we couldn't leave the dog here. And even to chain him up so that we could leave or do anything, he's miserable on a chain. He wants to be roaming. So, that's kind of the gist on it. That's, again, we knew it was a trial thing. And we're heavily leaning on, he just might not work out for us, unfortunately. So, of course, if we do decide to take him home, we, we will absolutely let you guys know. But... As of now, that, that's kind of what we're leaning towards. I don't want to see him miserable on a chain. He's too, he's too awesome. Aren't ya? Just too awesome. Good dog, just might not be the fit for us.